I watched the new Blumhouse movie, Megan, and found it to be eye-opening. Conspiracy theorists talk about how movies can be predictive programming, and I felt the same after leaving the theater. I see a future where we all use technology similar to Megan. An android or robot that monitors you, knows what you like, can tell you what you want to hear, and gently discipline you. This uh, evolving kind of AI, and I'm sure you, the viewer, have heard about this in passing somewhere or someplace. Uh, something that gives updates on your health and sells goods marketed explicitly to you. I mean, how far are we along with this kind of system now with virtual assistants like a Siri or like an Alexa or uh, like our smartphones and our smartwatches? Other movies that demonstrate a similar type of technology like Blade Runner 2049 with Joy or in Her with Joaquin Phoenix and he has that device, Samantha. Something closer to Megan, uh, this particular movie, was uh, this Megan Doll, was this UK sci-fi series. It was on Amazon Prime for a while. It was called Humans. It's with Gemma Chan. And uh, they're called synths in the show. And they cook, they clean, uh, they shop for groceries, and humans even have sex with them. Now, talking about the movie, Katie, the young girl in the film, uh, she becomes addicted to Megan, and she lets her guardian, this is another Gemma, not Gemma Chan that I just mentioned in a moment ago, but Gemma, who is played by Allison Williams from Get Out. She is Daniel Kaluuya's like, love interest in Get Out, right? She's the actress in this. She's the one that plays the guardian to this little girl. She's also the person who invents Megan in the movie. So Katie, the little girl, lets Gemma know that she uh, wants Megan around more often. And she develops this like, addiction to her, this like dependency to her. She says it makes her feel good. It makes her feel safe. It makes her feel protected. And um, I like that the film makes a commentary on this obsession with technology, like, like present day us and our phones. Or Even when I was in the movie, there were people a few rows ahead of me that even for this movie, like an hour 42, an hour and 42 minutes, and they couldn't even put their phone down and just watch the movie. Like they had to pick up their phone and look at it and play with it and stuff like that. So uh, the movie talks about this kind of obsession, this addiction with technology. I very much like that. Now, uh, Gemma, the, the guardian to this little girl in the movie, she's successful and she's focused on her career but she's emotionally absent for this little girl who just went through her parents getting killed and she chose to take care of this little girl this little girl is her niece and uh her sister and her sister's husband the little girl's parents they end up dying in a freak accident then she becomes the girl's guardian but like i said she's emotionally absent she is just very uh, not there for the girl for the most part of the movie and uh, it's definitely disturbing but preferring work uh, over dealing with her niece she decides to have the technology i.e megan babysit katie the little girl and Gemma also uses katie for research purposes and advancement in her company and I've seen many parents do this present day. Another little piece of commentary that the film makes. First, I mentioned the addiction to technology. And now it's how we use technology to babysit our kids. And we all see parents, and I'm not a parent, so I apologize if I'm talking out of turn. Uh, you see parents as hand off the phone to kids just to kind of keep them occupied or the tablet. And the kid is just like, you know, like, here, just take this, like, just don't bother me kind of thing. And also, uh, maybe they'll put on a favorite streaming service, uh, you know, that has a lot of kids' content, and they'll just, the kids will sit there and just kind of watch what's on. So it's kind of like using technology to babysit kids, and that's very present in this movie as well. Uh, now, Megan, the, this robot doll, and Katie, they were both really the highlights of this movie. Katie is a, a young actress by the name of Violet McGraw. I've seen her before somewhere, but I, I don't remember where. But she she was great. And Megan, it took three different actresses to play Megan. Uh, it was like the person who did the voice. It was uh, one person who was a kid who played as Megan. And then I think there was an adult. Maybe she was like, she's like the dancer and like maybe the gymnast and all this other stuff. And of course, a lot of CGI and FX uh, to really bring Megan to life. And her face it looks very much like a doll's face but it definitely has a, like a little bit of a creepy factor in there i will definitely go and say that if some kind of product that's similar to megan not megan the actual like you know doll from the movie but 
if a doll similar to Megan with that kind of technology was sold, let's say under the American Girl banner, uh, I think that they would sell a lot of these kinds of dolls for sure. Megan as a character, she exhibits like Ultron Avengers Part 2 MCU level powers where she can manipulate electrical devices. She can kind of travel through Wi-Fi, uh, through Bluetooth, through the cloud and manipulate things that way as well. And I really feel like that this character, you know, this movie's already successful. It's already kind of uh, made more money than its budget. I was reading that its budget was like $12 million. Let's say they spent another, like, so many million to advertise the movie. And I think the first weekend was already, like, close to $30 million in the box office. It's first weekend. Definitely going to make its money back. Um, the movie itself is not very scary. Uh, I would say it even has some humorous moments where she just kind of breaks into song at times, singing like Titanium, for example. But uh, this movie was very entertaining. Well, like I said, the thing that I got most out of it is just like it made me really think how we are so close to this kind of technology being part of our everyday lives. A fantastic new introduction to a new character that can go down in the horror pantheon, possibly, possibly, of like a Chucky or like a Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers or Annabelle or something like that, right? But uh, those are my thoughts. Definitely want to hear what you have to say. Please, if you're watching this, wherever you may be watching this, comment down below. Let me know what you think, whether you agree or disagree. Like I said, I really appreciate you spending your time watching this, and I will catch you on the next one.